And this is Carol from the STS. This is the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Adult Cardiac Surgery Database monthly webinar uh, for February 1st. Today is Hank's birthday. He turned one today, and this is Bristol. Got his Bristol's DNA results back, and he's a Powawa, which is um, part pit and part Chihuahua. He's about almost half and half, so um, he's going to be a little guy, and Hank's going to stay, going to keep growing big. I never heard of a Powawa before, but there you have it. Uh, okay, so on. Um, our agenda for today, welcome and introductions, STS important updates, STS updates, IQVIA updates, and then we're gonna talk about harvest close. And I agree, it's a very odd combo, but he is super cute. Yesterday I sent, I, oh, let me start back. Um, what we started doing recently with the other databases with a congenital specifically, I think congenital and general thoracic is notifying sites two weeks ahead of harvest close if they were at risk for not being included in analysis, which means not being included, uh, receiving composite measure results back or star rating results. This is um, this decision was just to um, help sites to know where they're standing two weeks prior to harvest close, to give them a heads up and just to provide support to make sure you can get your data clean um, in time for harvest close. So we did that. Um, with the other two and I forgot to mention this on our January webinar because I thought we were going to have another webinar in January which I was going to mention it on um, I forgot to mention it in our early January webinar that these notifications were going to start with harvest one of 2023 so um, how this occurs is DC, um, IQVIA runs a report two weeks prior to harvest close they look for they look at certain variables, the mortality variables, the MTDC stat, the MT Opti, and the MT30 stat. Um, that is the mortality discharge status, the mortality operative death, and the mortality 30-day status fields for your 2% threshold on all of the analyzed cases, which is cabbage, AVRs, cabbage AVRs, uh, mitral valve repair replacement, cabbage mitral valve repair replacement. Uh, looks at that and then looks at the 5% threshold for cabbage non-emergent, non-emergent -sel salvage cases for if an uh, internal mammary met uh, the beta blocker, pre op beta blocker, discharge beta blocker, anti-coagulants, uh, anti discharge anticoagulants, and discharge lipid lowering statins were um, had an answer, yes or no answer. And it, what was missing, if anything, was marked unknown or left missing. So DCRI or IQVIA provides this report to me. And then I sent out an email to 484 sites. It was a total of 2,497 separate emails to primary and backup data contacts, some of which are, uh, there's a large overlap at sites. Some primary backups or primary contacts had up to 20 plus sites associated with them. So these emails went out yesterday morning and I've been working with sites providing more granularity as to uh, the cases that they were, that were um, making them miss this threshold. I'm sorry, I'm gonna shut off the chat box now. Folks could send in, um, put your questions in the um, Q and A please. So I, uh, reached out to these sites i've been working with probably about 200 sites have reached out so far to where i was able to send more granular information um, regarding what pids they were and cases or um, what measures they were going to miss out or risk of missing out and and what cases were causing them to miss out or could cause them to miss out just to give an opportunity noted that the snapshot of the data was taken on January 27th. So anything that was added or edited in the data warehouse, in the IQVIA warehouse, after the snapshot was taken is not reflected in the information that I have, um, which means that it, it could very well be different, but this is just what was in the warehouse on January 27th. And it's more of a heads up um, make sure you check your data and get it clean and let me know if you need help kind of thing. Uh, most cases, when I looked at most of the cases that I saw were 
from last quarter 2022, which to me indicates that sites are still cleaning up their data. However, there were some straggler cases from 2020 and 2021 that should have um, been cleaned up or should have had this addressed in previous harvests. Um, which leads me to think that we need to do a little bit more education about making sure our data is cleaned up and uh, I need to provide that support to help you. So it's not a foolproof method. It's not a foolproof method in uh, saying, hey, once you get this report and you clean up only these cases, you're good to go. It's more of a heads up to be used as a tool in addition to all the other tools that you have. Um, in addition to all the other tools that you have in the IQVIA platform that we're going to go over again um, today. Uh, not all sites were sent the email. It was only those sites who were at risk who, uh, for having that 2% missingness threshold for the mortality fields listed here, or the 5% threshold for having uh, the NQF measures missing cabbage non-emergent was uh, the IMA used, react beta blocker and discharge beta blocker discharge, antiplatelets and discharge lipid lowering statins. Um, so I answered one question. Okay. If you did not get an email notice, it doesn't um, it doesn't mean um, that you still do not need to go in and check your data. It's just saying that it, the data that was in the warehouse on January 27th did not meet the did not meet the criteria to be emailed. Um, but I still want you to be able to go and check your data, make sure you're clean. That's why we're going to continue to do this review today. Okay. So important dates for adult cardiac, January 30th, Monday, the Harvest 4 reports were released. This was the first time that the analytics was performed in the STS Research Center. I did a review of the reports um, with Melanie from IQVIA prior to release. They did look good. A um, couple questions I had, the Research Center was able to answer and there was um, the, the reports all looked um, fine for release. So those reports are available in the IQVIA platform. February 1st is today, that's our monthly webinar. February 10th is Harvest One closes or dates through December 31st, 2022. And the last day to opt out for that harvest is February 14th. Um, here are additional user group and monthly webinars listed. And then the next harvest closes May 19th and that will be Harvest Two OR dates through March 31st, 2023. Another snapshot of our harvest dates. And then the February training manual has been posted. Melinda's ahead of schedule and she did an awesome job getting it done. IQVIA updates. IQVIA is no longer joining us on these calls. They sent me their updates. So I will go through the slides that they sent and probably not be able to answer questions, but happy to pass anything along. Um, first thing I wanna note is that we do have a new support plan for adult cardiac, general thoracic and congenital databases. If you have questions regarding the IQVIA platform, tier one support has been moved over to STS, so we'll be your first stop. Um, if you have questions about the participant report, about your dashboard reports, your risk adjusted benchmark reports, you need help logging in your credentials or uh, for whatever reason you've gotten blocked from logging into IQVIA, anything um, that you need help with with the IQVIA platform, your first email is going to go to stsdb underscore help desk at sts.org. That's where the tick, they will open a ticket and then uh, route it up appropriately either to myself or over to IQVIA. If it's something that um, they or I can't help you with, then IQVIA will be looped in. And then if it's a research question uh, or an analytics question, it'll come to me first and then we'll go to the research center and loop those folks in um, for their expertise. The other email that we have is for contact updates, contracts, and other general questions, and that's stsdb at sts.org. So it's two separate, one's more operational, one's more functional. The operational is the stsdb at sts.org. The functional is related to reporting questions and analytics, and that's stsdb underscore help desk at sts.org. All right. Here are the IQVIA updates. Please review the full list of the release items on the notification section for the January 2023 IQVIA production de uh, deployment. So that's when you first log in the notification tab on the left there. 
Uh, these are the updates for that were released for January 2023. The Harvest 4 report was released on Monday. The risk adjusted regional reports have been updated to display the yearly columns when data is not available for the time period. The risk adjusted benchmarks, isolated cabbage, operative information, internal memory used, left, right, both calculations have been updated to display the instance if left and right are selected within the case. The risk adjusted benchmark report in the morbidity mortality section, other complications, new onset AFib has been updated to include, uh, I'm sorry, to exclude those patients who were in, um, in AFib at the time. I'm sorry, let me repeat that. Has been updated to exclude patients from the new onset AFib total if they have a history of AFib but not in AFib at time of OR entry and have, a, um, and have AFib postoperatively. The items below were released here production the weekend of January 28th. Missing variable report logic has been updated um, for the temp date variable. This is the field we use for the date of positive COVID testing, and it will display null if the parent, if the field COVID that we use for COVID-19, yes, um, the yes field, if that is answered yes, but the date field is left blank. The missing variable report logic has been updated to consider. This is the device location in the aorta section. If no, addition, if no additional graphs were selected, um, then this the de deployment method will be uh, not flagged as missing on the missing variable report. The missing variable, the MVR national quality form filter has been updated to include the below variables. Week of January 18th, participant dashboard, the anesthesia uh, report denominator has been fixed to only include those who are participating in anesthesia. The merit-based incentive program um, information references have been removed from the four uh, three links below, the form management resource menu and the operational reports menu. Okay. I went through that kind of fast. These slides will be posted and the Updates are available on the IQVIA platform. And I see we already have almost 50 questions. I'm just going to, um, I don't know if Amy or if uh, Leanne, if you're able to answer any of those. Okay. Yeah, I think I can handle some. Oh, I, I'm going to take for the first question. So regarding the letter that was sent out, so I had, um, we had to send out almost 2,500 letters and I could not personalize each one. The sites that did reach out to me, I sent them information uh, with the P PIDs that those were associated with. Uh, so if you have multiple PIDs, um, I answered about 200, I think Leanne and I answered about 200 emails between yesterday and today. Uh, so be patient with us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, Okay, I will continue going on now to this part of the webinar. It's already uh, 20 after, and I know we're going to need quite a bit of time for questions. So preparing for the harvest close, the journey. Depending on which one, that's why we were going to play Don't Stop Believing, but didn't work out. All right, I'm going to go over to this site here. Can you all see, still see my screen okay, Leanne and Melinda? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna use uh, this site as an example. When I log in, the first thing I have is the uploader form, the form management and notifications. The notifications tab, is um, where all of those things I just read are located under 130-2023. So you can refer to them there. And then the harvest port results have been released. Okay, so on the uploader page, a um, couple things I'm gonna check here. I've uploaded a file. I can view reports. I see I don't have any critical errors. Um, when I go to view reports, I just wanna make sure that there are no critical errors, meaning that all of my cases got in okay. Um, this is kind of the first first step in the, in the journey of cleaning up your data. 
if this is just for this one upload, I had 100% all of my things were warnings. I didn't have any errors or critical errors. Critical summary page, um, I would have to put in my dates here. I'll just check up through the calendar year 2022. And it's going to take a second. I guess I could do just do a month at a time. Let's see if I can go back and do that. I'm going to just start with January from this year. Let's see. We'll let that run. Um, so if I had critical errors or um, warnings, I would have those different um, colored boxes. This one clearly had some type of critical file validation failure, so the records didn't even make it in. But we, I think we all know how um, those things. So this uh, yellow X here means that I have some errors I need to check out. And then if there were critical errors, it would be a red X. I can see here that the number of records that got in that I submitted is uh, 13 and the number of records that were put in is 13, that were accepted were 13. So I'm gonna really um, pay attention to this, these two numbers just to make sure that all the records I think are being submitted have been accepted. If there's a discrepancy between these numbers, if this said um, say 11 out of 13, that would indicate to me that I have two records that have issues that we're not even able to get into the data warehouse um, to begin the cleaning process. So that's going to be my first step to make sure I have all my cases in. Once I make sure I have all my cases in, um, I'm going to go to my operational reports. And I am going to start, I think um, the way we normally would do this is I'm probably going to start with my harvest summary report, do the missing variable report, and then the participant dashboard. I think that's how we've done it before. And I'm going to work in small chunk, uh, small time frame. So um, I like to work by months. And I know that this harvest is gonna, going to contain data from 20, all of 2020, all of 2021, and all of 2022. So the entire time frame for analysis will be January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2022. Those are my OR dates, so the date, date of procedure performed. When cleaning up my data, if I have not made any changes to data from a prior harvest, from the prior harvest, and I participated in the prior harvest, which would have been harvest four of 2023, OR dates ending September 30th, 2023, uh, 2022, I, um, harvest for 2022, OR dates ending September 30th, 2022, and I didn't make any changes to that data, and I was happy with that data, and I know that I have already cleaned that data because I made sure it was good to go for that harvest, then I don't need to go back and revisit it. I already know that that data is good to go, and I'm happy with it. Um, so the first place I'm going to check, so that means that I, I now have three, three new months that I need to focus on if I was happy with my previous data. I'm going to focus on October's cases, November's cases, and December's cases. And I'm going to look at them, uh, oh, 2022. I'm going to look at those um, by month because that's, I like to work by months. I don't like to work in um, bigger time frames just because I think it can get too cumbersome and I forget um, everything lines up together. It's so much information and it, it doesn't keep me really organized. So I'm going to just work, uh, for me, it's easier just to do it by month. So I'm first time frame. I'm going to look at saying that I am all happy with my cleanup is October 1st through um, October 31st of 2022. And I'm in the harvest summary report. And now we need to, so this is just, there's a couple things that I'm going to check here. The reason I'm going to start with this is just to make sure that my data is clean um, until I, uh, to make sure my data is clean, working in small pieces. And then once I ensure that each month is clean, uh, I'm happy with each month, 
then I'm going to look at the larger time frame of um, 12 month periods to ensure that I'm at the threshold for missing this. So the missing threshold, the missing threshold is applied to 12 months of data. Our analysis are performed on 36 months of data, three 12 month periods, the threshold of 2% missing, uh, less than 2% missing, I'm sorry, 2% or less missing for the mortality threshold and the 5% or less missing for the NQF variables for the cabbage thresholds are applied to 12 month periods. So the first thing I do is I make sure that each month within those that 12 month period is good, that I'm gonna make sure the entire 12 months, each three 12 month period, each of the three 12 month period included analysis is good to go and that I'm not at risk for being excluded. So first thing I look here is, this is the harvest summary report for October 1st through October 31st, 2022. I wanna make sure I have all of the cases that I'm expecting in analysis. This is where I'm going to find so total records that were submitted for this time frame is 14. I can verify this um, against two things, my OR log, if I keep a separate OR log of cases that I entered into the uh, vendor software, or even within my vendor software for the cases that I abstracted, that I exported into a file, that dat dat file that I uploaded, I can make sure that this number matches. So this is where I'm going to look for my October cases. On here, I have a couple things. I have no outstanding validations. That's almost 29% of my cases. However, I have these outstanding warnings in 71% of my cases. And if um, that's fine out, no outstanding validations, not a big deal. I don't need to check those. I'm more concerned about the warnings. And if I had errors, those would be those would be cases that I would be um, that would grab my attention the first because I want to make sure those errors are clean. Usually, those errors. Um, our logical errors and letting you know, hey, you really need to check this out. This would be something, I think the renal failure one where you code a patient is having a preoperative creatinine greater than four, but postoperatively you code them as new renal failure that logically, according to our definition, does not make sense. So it's going to fire an error and say this patient, um, are you sure this patient's preoperative creatinine was greater than four and that they do meet requirements for a new uh, post-operative renal failure diagnosis. And that's the things that I'm gonna check first. This uh, site for October does not have any error. So I'm gonna go straight to warnings and it's gonna show me um, the record ID that the warnings are falling on, how many warnings and what these warnings are down here. I can make this bigger by clicking on this double arrow. So I'll go ahead and click on the double arrow. These are all the warnings for the month of October that I have. The messages that's provided here, and I can make this bigger. And I also think, hold on, let me see if I can do it. I left clicked on here, and I'm just going to sort it in alphabetical order because some of these are probably going to be the same and are going to uh, be totally fine. So I have pacemaker issue, diastolic pressure, um, left uh, LVN di systolic, di I'm sorry. LVN systolic dimensions, diastolic dimensions, PA systolic pressures. These are all outside the usual range. I uh, may want to check, just spot check one or two of these, but it's not unusual for cardiac patients to fall outside of our usual ranges. I'm not super concerned about them. Um, I spot checked one or two. They matched what I had in my medical record, so I'm just going to move on. Same thing with these INR cases. Not a big deal. Everything looks good. We're not, there's nothing here that's alarming to me, um, except for this last one where it says transcatheter replacement. So this is VSTCV MIT. Transcatheter replacement is marked yes, and implant typed is not marked transcatheter device. Transcatheter device or mitral leaflet clips, uh, mitral leaflet clip. This, these fields may be inconsistent. So I'm going to just go probably go into this chart, make sure I didn't accidentally mark this as a transcatheter case, right? This it looks like this is saying that I marked this as a mitral a transcatheter replacement. And I didn't mark the type as transcatheter device or mitral leaf clipplet, which are usually the only two devices that can be implanted transcatheter, transcatheter through a transcatheter. Um, 
and it's really um, not consequential because I don't, uh, we don't analyze transcatheter cases. So it's either I put this case in knowing that I was doing it, you know, just put it in just to put it in, or I accidentally marked transcatheter replacement and I didn't mean to do that. So I'm just going to check to make sure and I'll, I'll go into my vendor software um, after looking it through the EHR, I'll update it in the vendor software, and then I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to re-update it into the IQVIA platform. Now, when you go to re-update cases in the IQ, re-upload cases in the IQVIA platform, you have to make sure that, um, say you're going to up, upload a case, and this case was performed on, um, it doesn't say, but let's just say this case was performed on October 10th of 2022, I want to make sure that I upload every case that was performed on October 10th or whatever time frame I'm showing that I'll, uh, going to upload. I want to make sure that all my cases are included in that 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 file, because what can happen is if you pick a time frame, say I want to say October 10th and I originally had done three cases, have submitted three cases to the platform, to the IQVIA platform, and then I go and I make changes to one of those cases and I go to download another dot dat file for that same time frame and I'm only including the case I made a change to when I go update that file it's going to actually remove the two cases the other two cases that were previously entered for that date it will remove those because it thinks that you entered them in error and that the time frame for war, the time frame that you're providing only was intended to have one case so just make sure that when you up, re-upload your data uh, for whatever time frame, if it's a day, a week, or a month, make sure that it's including all of the cases. Um, double check the counts on that page. Um, double check the counts when you do your upload to ensure that these values are what you're expecting. That instead of 217, it doesn't just say one. <laughs> that you know you are uploading the number of cases for the time frame you're including all the cases okay so i've cleaned up i looked at the harvest summer report i did my date ranges for october i um, we're going to pretend i did november and december and now i'm just going uh, to do one final big overview for each of the calendar years 12 month cal uh, rolling calendar years included in analysis so i'll start with 2020 January 1st, and I'm going to look all the way through December 31st, 2020. This is my first 12 month period that will be included in this analysis. Just going to double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I have my outsta no outstanding validations. I have the outstanding warnings. Uh, when I click on those, I'm going to sort them. And I could see everything here. I'm just going to do a um, quick scrolling. I see all race fields are no or are missing. I'm probably going to check that out if um, this is likely telling me that I coded race and didn't provide uh, race other field. So I'm just going to check that one out. Everything else is looking reasonable to me. And we're going to pretend that I updated that transcatheter case. Um, I updated that transcatheter case. This is one though, this one's gonna grab my attention. This urgent emergent reason. That one looks a little, it's kind of like a flag, right? Urgent emergent reason is balloon pump, but balloon pump insertion is not marked yes. So I am, uh, I'll check this case. Good thing I checked my year again, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm gonna go back and double check this case in my vendor software and EHRs to make sure I didn't code something incorrectly. I'll fix it and then I'll re-upload it. Okay, so we're going to pretend I did all that. And I then I have gone through, um, I've gone through each of my three 12 month periods. Um, here's my first date range was 1-1-2022 one, one, to 12-31-2020. Number of records I have in analysis for this time is 196. This is just a broad overview of what's an analysis. It does not break it down by PROC ID. It's just your total cases. Go back to my operational report and I'm going to go to my missing variable report. 
this is the next step. So I cleaned up all my errors, all my warnings. I've checked. I've corrected anything that seemed wonky. And now I'm going to go look at the same time frame for my missing variable report. I'll start with I'll start with October again because this is the new first new quarter included in analysis. And I'm going to apply parameters. And so this is, um, here's your date range listed over here, October 1st through October 31st. I am going, uh, let's see, I don't know if I can sort these or not. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I guess that's how it's going to be. So here's my missing variable resummary. Um, just for that time frame, these are the only fields I have missing variables on. The first one is deep sternal wound infection within 90 days. This is not a required field by STS. However, we ask if you do capture it, that you are consistent and captured on all your patients. This site chooses not to capture it. So it's not, it's not a flag to me that I'm missing 14 out of 14. I will, um, this risk factor INR, I'm missing it on 7% one case. I probably am just going to go double check to make sure I don't have that. I'm the reason I'm concerned about this is that it's a risk variable. So I want to make sure I have my risk variable. I want to make sure I have my melt scores. Any things that are marked um, that are risk factors, I want to make sure I have. And just because it's going to go into um, the risk adjustment of my cases and it's going to impact my observed to expected ratio, which in turn impacts my um, potentially impacts my star rating. So uh, when, when things like INR or left blank, it defaults to a normal value. And very likely this one patient may have had a totally abnormal INR, which would impact the outcomes of the case. So I'll make sure I just check that. Same thing with the MELD score. Some things are legitimately missing and that's fine, um, but I just wanna make sure I don't collect middle name on most patients. And then I just probably gonna go through and make sure that these are really missing. I don't have anything alarming here that's um, missing. That's the all, then it's broken down um, by PROC ID. These are your PROC ID. Um, these would be variables that are used to determine the procedure identification, national quality form variables, risk adjustment model variables. Um, oops, that's a little bit behind. And then all. I just start in all because um, it's nice to have these filters, but I really just want to check everything anyway. Okay, so missing variable reports looking good for that time frame. Now I'm going to check my missing variable report for that larger year time frame. So I'm going to start with, um, we could just do January, oopsie, January 1st. And I'll just start with last year's, um, or we could do, I guess we could start with the first one, January 1st, 2020 through January 31st, uh, 2020. I don't know why it, it doesn't always, January, no, December 31st. Sorry about that. December 31st. So I have the first year, first calendar year, 12, 12 um, month rolling period that will be included in this analysis. It's going to be a much longer list. It does include variables. Um, it does include variables from 2.9 and 4.2 because 2.9 uh, ended June 30th, 2020, and 4.2 went live July 1st, 2020. Um, make this bigger for me. And I'll just go through to see if there's not anything. Um, I've I've likely already checked these 2020 cases, but I'm just going to do a quick once over. Um, to make sure that uh, there's nothing alarming that's standing out. I mean, we look at our data. I know, like, here's one uh, additional ICU hours. It's missing on one of one of one of one of my patients, which is a hundred percent. I might be concerned here because additional ICU hours um, 
I think that we use it as an audited variable, STS audits that field. If not, they do audit ICU hours and we look at additional value of the additional hours to come up with that correct calculation for total ICU hours. Um, and I really shouldn't have this missing. It, it indicates to me that probably the parent was coded yes and I just didn't fill in the hours or whomever was abstracting didn't fill in the hours. So I'm gonna go back and check this, find out what chart that is. I can do that. Let's see if I can do that. Um, I think I can drill down on here. Hold on one second. So that was um, post-op ICU hours. If I can find it. I don't know where it went. I'm sure it's on here. I just can't see it. Here it is. Additional ICU hours, 100, one out of one. I'm going to click on that. And then down here in the case list will, will pop up. Um, and I'm going to, I could access this case here as a read only, or I could just search uh, using the record ID in my vendor software to see what case this was. And I want to make sure I get that um, updated. Couple other things like classification of NYHA, uh, 27 of them are blank. I'm just going to double check to make sure that those are really blank. That is a risk factor that goes into my observed to expected, uh, into my observed and expected ratios. Um, platelets, same thing, just one case, but still, why, you know, if, if it's missing, just want to verify it. The same thing with my, um, CK and troponins for these two cases have missing values. I'll just double check these to make sure that they really are missing. Once I get it all cleaned up, I'll be happy um, knowing that I, I have good data going forward. Okay, so I checked this out. I verified that they, there were additional ICU hours I accidentally missed. I'm gonna go back and enter those hours and re-upload a time frame that includes that case. And I'm gonna do the same thing, looking at the missing variable report for each, um, for first, I'm going to look at the new three months that are in analysis. So whatever three months is um, part of that new analysis. And then I'm going to look at each 12 month rolling period um, that's used in analysis. I will then, um, my final destination for this, my final destination for this is going to be the participant dashboard. So I did harvest summer report. I did my missing variable report. Now I'm gonna do participant dashboard. This gets more granular. It's, um, I've already done the cleanup in the very generic areas. Um, just making sure everything go good to go before I get to this participant dashboard. The first time frame, and I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with my data. Um, I verified what's in there is correct. What's missing, I corrected. Um, and we're going to pretend that I corrected it, even if it shows up here. Um, but the time period, I'm going to look at the um, three uh, periods that are go going to be analyzed where the 2% thresholds and the 5% thresholds are applied. I'm going to look at the first calendar, uh, first 12 month period, which will be January 1st through December 31st of 2020. I'll look at the second. 12 month period, January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. And the third 12 month period, January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. I'll look at each three of those separately because uh, that is what's going to cause me, if I'm at risk of not receiving a star rating, that's where I'm going to find it. So first one I'm going to look at is the first 12 month period, January 1st, 2020, through January 1st, uh, sorry, December 31st, January 1st, 2020 through, dear Lord, through December 31st, 2020. First 12 month period. Then I'm gonna go to procedures and I'm going to look at each procedure separate because the, those thresholds are applied to the cabbage population 
to the AVR population, mitral valve population, AVR cab, mitral valve cab, mitral valve repair, replace, et cetera. It's, it's um, uh, provided, it's uh, calculated separately. The one that you have to be careful with is this mitral valve repair and replacement. This is a combined, even though we have separate models, it's a combined composite. So you have to check mitral valve repair and mitral valve replacement when you're doing this check. Um, for this case, for these purposes, I'm going to look at, uh, first I'm going to look at isolated cabbage. I do want all my subsets, so I'm not going to uncheck any of these subsets. They're all included in analysis. So I just wanna look at this overall um, population. This is pr procedure identification one, isolated cabbage. For this, I am going, um, I'm just gonna look at all my patients. I, sh I wanna make sure I have, um, I wanna make sure I have my thresholds met for all of my patients. Um, if it gets very touchy and you might have a COVID patient that you, um, aren't able to get mortality on our COVID positive patient. As you know, those patients were excluded from analysis from January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2021. Um, right now, this first time frame I'm looking at, they would have been excluded. So I can um, code no confirmed diagnosis of COVID. But just to be inclusive of all of my patients, I'm just gonna look at all patients. Procedure, isolated cab, Time period, January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Apply parameters. You can see the parameters here just uh, as you're working through everything. And Vicki, while this is loading, I saw your question about can you just upload one case, the case you fix? No, you can't upload just one case. You have to upload. The minimum you could upload is a day. Um, it's not per case. It has to be a, a date. So it has to be if you want if you updated a case that was performed on October 15th, you can't upload just that one case. You have to upload um, if you want it to. You could upload the whole day of October 15th. You can upload the whole week that includes October 15th. Um, but do not upload just one case because it will knock everything else out that was performed on that same day if you do. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of confusion is coming in, Carol, as I'm looking through the questions. Yeah. Um, and that's how, you know, we're seeing with other harvests and other databases um, removing records. And I think that's where a lot of confusion is coming in. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, you cannot upload just one case. It has to be a time frame. And this was the same with, um, I believe, with DCRI too, right, Leanne? You had to upload a time frame. It wasn't case right. specific. Yeah. Right. Correct. So um, it has to be, if if I'm going to upload a file and I go to download it from my vendor software, I want to make sure that the time frame I select includes the case I made a change to. And so I'm basing my upload on a time frame, not on just the case. And make sure to include all of those cases that were in, within that time frame in your upload. Because what happens is Acuvia looks at whatever date you're submitting. and it then compares it to what they already have in the warehouse. And if you had say 20 cases in the warehouse for the time for that specific time frame, and now you're uploading that time frame with only one case, it's going to think that you intended to knock out all those other 19 cases. And you'll just end up with one case in the warehouse for that time frame. So um, make sure that your time frame is what you, you start your um, upload on. And that those cases, the case number within that time frame matches what you're expecting. Um, and you can do that multiple, one way is here, number of cases. Um, this is on the uh, participant dashboard. The other way was within the upload harvest, um, the harvest screen. You could see um, per harvest how many cases were submitted. Okay. So this is the this is my um, isolated cabbage. My time period I selected was uh, January first, twenty twenty through December thirty first. 
the number of cases performed, I had performed through this time frame 121 isolated cabbages. If I were to query my vendor software or if I'm looking at my OR logs for December, uh, January 1st through December 31st, 2020, I should expect to see the same number, 121. I am okay here. I want to check um, my mortality fields. Remember, it has to be a total, uh, the total of missingness for MTDC stat, MT opti, and MT 30 day stat. Uh, and on this screen, it just took a second to load. There we go. I have, uh, this is MT, this is my operative mortality, MT opti. Yes, no missing, my missingness, I have 0%. My MT date missing is 0%. Let's see where the other ones are. I thought we had them all together. MTDC stat, my missing is 0%. And my uh, mortality status at 30 days, my missing is 0%. I'm not at risk for my cases in 2020 for isolated cabbage for the mortality threshold. The other, and these variables, um, We all know the MT30 stat is the 30 day status. The MTFD is the operative death and the DC uh, status is the discharge status. Those are the three variables. I think IQVIA is, um, I thought they had something in here that combined all of those. I don't see it yet. So I'll have to double check on it with IQVIA on that. Um, I do see that they have a field that they added in that, that counts your deaths, but it doesn't apply to uh, the missingness. The other ones I'm going to check are my NQF measure variables. One thing that might be helpful to do is um, this is the national report overview that contains all of this information. This is on page 30 of 39 of the report. This is your data completeness, the cabbage composite quality ratings. It tells you all of your, uh, the requirements to be included in the analysis. It talks about the thresholds for inclusion uh, for the mortality fields and for the NQF fields. So there are those, and then the NQF fields are up here. The use of um, internal mammary, pre-F beta blocker discharge, beta blocker discharge, antiplatelet, and um, discharge antilipidemia, antilipid medications. So for my cabbage case, for my cab, and they're only for cabbage cases, I would want to look at my IMA used variable. My missing up. Oh. IMA used, my missing is 0%. Oh Lord. My preoperative beta blocker, I'm going to find under my preoperative medications. Missing 0%. And then my post op, uh, my post operative medications are going to be under discharge mortality. These are my discharge meds. And these are the ones we're looking at discharge beta blocker, antiplatelet, and anti -lipid, uh, lipidemic. And the ADP inhibitors, aspirin, and antiplatelets are all combined into one measure. 
I'm just going to check my missingness here to see if I have any missing. And if I do, I'll check that patient to see if they fell into the category for aspirin or, eight, or for one of the other three as yes. The other one is the discharge beta blocker. My missingness is zero. And then discharge lower lip, lipid lowering statins, my discharge, um, it's zero. If I had any missing here, I would verify. Um, I believe that this, I think that this is the only one that we use for the measures, the lipid lowering statins. Others do not count towards it. Um, so for 2020, my site's looking good for inclusion into analysis. I verified that more, my three mortality fields, MTFD, MT 30 day stat, and MT discharge status are not near the 2% threshold. And I verified that the five NQF measures for isolated cabbage are not at the 5% threshold. Now I'm going to do that same check for the date range of um, for 2021 calendar year and for 2022 calendar year. And then I'll do, and then I'll, I'll say, I finished, I'm done checking cabbage. I'm gonna go into the AVR. We don't have NQF measures for AVR that are um, applied with thresholds for inclusion into analysis. Uh, the only thing, let's see if that'll work. The only thing that we're gonna be concerned about for um, the other uh, composite measures are the mortality fields. So I'm just going to check. I'll just do this as a um, brief review. I'm in AVR. My time frame is January 1st through December 31st, 2020. I'm going to go check my discharge mortality fields. Number of cases, 13 for the time frame. This will appear at all tops, top of the lines. Uh, I am going to check my 30-day status, which is the MT30 stat field. My missingness is 0%. So I'm good there. My status at hospital discharge is 0% missing. I'm good there. And my um, MTFD, which is my operative death, uh, operative mortality, my missingness is 0%. I am not at risk for my 2020 AVR, isolated AVR cases. I'll check each corresponding calendar year. Once I've done that for all of my, once I've done that um, for AVR, the individual AVR cabbage, mitral valve cabbage, I go to check. Remember, when you're checking mitral valve, you need to check mitral valve replacement and mitral valve repair together. Um, and this time frame should I'll start here because that's what the measure looks at. It's um, MVRR, mitral valve repair and or, I'm sorry, mitral valve repair or replacement. Did they combine it in the one composite measure? And I would just do the same thing with discharge mortality. Once I've done um, all of these checks, so here I have a mortality status at 30 days. I do have 13 missing cases. Um, so this is, a, this is now it has, it has my attention. Um, oh, that's STS. Let me, I'm waiting. I got to wait for my site to populate before I get excited. Um, I'm going to check each, each category here again. Now, once I've done all of uh, each 12 month period for each of the procedures that are analyzed, um, I'm happy. I don't have anything else to worry about. Um, then I'm done with cleaning up my data for the harvest. So um, then that's it. I'm going to go to questions while this finishes loading. I think it's kind of a big set of data. That caused, so for Melissa, that caused a lot of problems for our sites. Could you not just send them to the RSM? So no, they were sent to the primary and backup data contacts for each site. Um, I'm not sure which stakeholders you're talking to, but they were listed as a primary contact for your site. Um, for the database. They weren't listed as a billing contact or as a surgeon. It was just your um, primary and backup data contacts. Are you excluding from all surgery categories or just the one with the missing data? You're excluded from the composite with the missing data. So um, if you met the reporting requirements for cabbage and you had less than 2% missingness um, for your mortality fields and less than 5% missingness, for your um, less than 5% missingness for your NQF fields, then you're included in the cabbage analysis. However, if 
for the AVR for the uh, MVR cabbage, AVR cabbage or isolated AVR, isolated MVRR. If you were over the threshold for any of those, whichever one you're over the threshold for is what you would be excluded from. I don't know how I ended up back down at the bottom. I don't know why a report was around the 27th that included missing follow up cases that were not 30 days out. Of course, there will be some some missing. Uh, so it was we ran that on the 27th. It was just a heads up. If you don't want to take action on it, then don't take action on it. Um, it was just a heads up that, that whatever data was in the warehouse on that site, you were at risk of receiving a report if we close, you know, whenever the harvest closed. If you didn't have it updated, then you were at risk. Yeah, most of the cases I saw, Amy, were from October, November, December. This was just a heads up. Um, so, and it was very helpful. I had um, quite a few sites who did reach out to me that this was helpful for. So if it wasn't helpful for you, then just ignore it next time if you receive it. Um, does the 2% threshold for MTDC stat, MTOPD, and MT30 stat apply to all cases entered or just isolated cabbage, AVR, MVR, AVR cabbage? So it applies to, make this a little bit smaller. So this is the um, data completeness. The first one on page 29 of 39 is the cabbage. So it will be applied to the data completeness requirements will be applied to this one. And then it is applied if you scroll down here and I think we look at AVR, AVR cabbage, mitral valve repair replacement, mitral valve repair replacement plus cabbage. It's applied to each of these as well. There actually should be an actual report on IQVIA to run this missingness threshold. So IQ, uh, I hear what you're saying, Beth. IQVIA doesn't have that report. It is something when we're looking at and building a um, an executive dashboard that will be accessible to all stakeholders within your hospital um, that will provide missingness information. And um, if you are at risk of not receiving a composite uh, rating, this report here, the participant dashboard, um, allows you to have the functionality to filter um, according to time frame, calendar time frame, uh, to filter by case. So it's a little bit more uh, functional than the just a static report that we could put on an executive dashboard. Um, it allows you to drill down into cases to see what you abstracted in that case. Um, from a data manager perspective, I think that using this participant dashboard, if I know where to go and what's important to me, um, is probably going to be. Um, what, what I would do just because of the functionality that's um, of involved. Um, but also just like uh, NCDR is how NCDR does with their green, yellow, red status. Um, that is something uh, similar that we are talking about for an executive dashboard. The short harvest time frame is difficult for facilities that have a higher volume and more complex patients. Yep, certainly understand we did shorten it by two weeks this time due to um, or by a week, I guess, due to harvest, uh, due to reporting deadlines, we have to meet at STS. Um, that's why I've been encouraging sites to um, do real-time abstraction and not wait. I'm um, seeing OR dates, uh, seeing cases from October, September, October, mainly October without having mortalities filled in was a little alarming to me. Um, that's you know over three months ago, and I'm not sure why their mortalities weren't filled in. Um, but just I hope that people can can get to towards more real time abstraction. I had several patients who had no bypassable LED disease, and they show on the report as Lima no. The internal mammary was not bypassable. Why is it showing as no when it should be NA? Um, I'm not sure if you could just send that question into STSDB at the help desk email. They'll be the ones to answer that for you. Yeah, and there's an underscore there. So it's STSDB underscore help desk, just FYI. Could you, could you put it in the chat box? Yes, just ma so folks on the call can see it. Okay, thank sure. you. Don't we usually get an email that the report is available? Our facility found accidentally. I think that report was going out today that the report, um, the email was going out today that the Harvest 4 report was available. Yeah, we can't move it to the third or fourth Friday for this first harvest, Lisa, unfortunately. 
the Duke platform was much easier to navigate around and not so confusing as IQVIA. We did not have this type of functionality within the Duke platform. You still received a um, data quality report that could take up to three days to receive once you have submitted your data. Um, they did not have a real-time dashboard like this. And even when you did receive, it was a paper form with no drill down capability. Why are you excluding AFib post-op if they were not in AFib at the time of OR entry? I, this was for the patients with new onset AFib. So I believe it was the new onset AFib um, are being excluded from the our new onset AFib is now excluding patients who had a history of AFib, even if they were not in AFib at the time of OR entry. Could emails be sent when harvest reports? Yeah, we're, we're sending it today. Would you show the slide with the new variable for MVR? Let me see what one that was. I think it's this one. Um, was there an email announcement that Harvest, I think it's going out today. We just got back from our annual meeting last week and it's been a very hectic week at SDS for our marketing team. So they are, um, they're working as fast as they can to get our notifications out. Also suggestion to do mortality missing field snapshot until at least 30 days after last date of service and harvest window. I'll have to check in to read that one a little bit more uh, closely, Lisa. It would be awesome for you to make a flow sheet or an algorithm to send out to the participants for this journey. You know, Sherry, that's a great idea. I'll work on that and see if it's something, um, something I could do uh, maybe ahead of harvest, if not harvest two, then maybe harvest two, it's in May. Uh, let me see if I can do that. I think that's a great idea. I don't recall any notification from my QVIA that Harvest One data needed to be submitted by Jan. No, it's um, it's not Harvest One data. So we ran this report on January 27th, two weeks before Harvest closed. Just as a heads up, hey, this is where you're at. Make sure you go and check these cases. Um, as of right now, what's in the warehouse, you um, are at uh, risk of being excluded from analysis if you don't get these cases cleaned up. The harvest deadline is February 10th. For those of us with multiple sites, having to check multiple reports month by month can be really challenging. It, is it possible to see one report per site that will provide any crucial items that were missed? I'm not sure I understand. We have having to check multiple reports month by month can be really challenging. Is it possible to see one report per site? So I think you can run that within your participant dashboard. Just you have to select the time frames. Yeah, and I think the uh, da the dashboard that you were referring to, Carol, that like executive dashboard, I think would be helpful. Oh, but when she has that... multiple sites, yeah. When she has multiple participants, she can just find everything on one page for each site. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I understood. Thanks, Leanne. Mm -hmm. In the harvest summary report, is there a percentage we should be aiming for in the no validations outstanding versus outstanding warnings? I think outstanding warnings are just that, um, hey, look at it. But if you have a site with very sick patients versus a site who has, um, you know, all of their cabbages are scheduled cases and they don't have urgent or emergent or many urgent emergent cases, you're likely to have patients who are always going to be outside of the usual ranges, meaning that you're always going to have warning more warnings than sites who have um, lower risk patients. So I, I don't really know. Um, I don't really know that there's an answer to that question that would be fair. Uh, to be honest, I do the same thing, clean up all of my data prior every harvest, but my vendor updated the program and not cause problems such as missing MTFD, et cetera. Can you, um, could you email me separately and let me know what happened so I can reach out to the vendor and check on that situation? We really need to be able to make this record so we cannot show those greater or less 
greater or lesser than warnings as we really don't care on those. And with the large volume centers, it makes it very hard to see ones we do care about. Yeah, that's why I think the filtering, um, the sorting, putting them in order is probably the best way to do it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we can customize it or how we could customize it or how we could allow it to be customized um, per center. But I think the best way right now is just to sort it and, and scroll through. Any update from the, I don't have any update on the multiple valve category. I thought that it uploads only those cases that you made changes to. No, you need to upload a time frame, including cases that you haven't made changes to. It would just show up as a duplicate record um, on the report or um, duplicate case uh, replaced or something like that. But you need to upload the time frame. 217 cases initially harvested. Say you correct to resubmit, it will only take the two that have changes, was my understanding. Right, but you have to upload the whole time frame. So you don't just upload those two cases. You have to upload um, the whole 20, 217. And then it'll say that two of those cases, um, they were updated in the, in the uploader. Just to be clear, I made changes to records in June and July. I only submitted these cases, not the whole month data. Do I have to resend the entire month that I made a change in just one record? You kind of lost me back there. Do not just submit those two cases. You have to submit a time frame that contains those two cases. So if it's a day, you have to submit that day, or if it's a week, submit the week. Do you have a better way of explaining that, Leanne? Uh, maybe I'm not explaining it right. Uh, I was just um, thinking. So, Pat, you made changes to a record in June and July. So, I think the easiest and the cleanest way to do it is so you don't step over your submissions is to just submit the entire month or the week. I, I just personally think it's cleaner and le and less risk to submit um, June and July. You just have to make sure when you're submitting those time periods that if you submit cases for one day, you have to make sure that you're just um, submitting not just the one record that you updated, one operation that you updated, you have to make sure that you're also including in your submission any other procedure, any other cases that were done on that one day. Because if you just resubmit that one day in July, if you had you did one, the one record you're updating happened on the 15th. Um, and then you had other procedures, other operations on the 15th, but you didn't submit those other operations for that one day, then you're going to lose those in your resubmission if you only submitted that one case. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I think it, I don't, I don't know the best way to explain it. I thought that, ooh, I thought it could land. It would be great if there was a different pie selection for the values and another for the missingness and mismatching. Well, most of the, uh, I have to, I'm not sure exactly what you, what you mean by that, Michelle, but some of those, I think the miss, the missingness and mismatching, those are usually, well, the mismatching or things that are logical are usually errors or critical errors. Values are usually uh, warnings. And they are show different colors on the pie, pie. You just didn't see it on the ones I had for demonstration. Uh, but if you want to email me your suggestions, happy to review it. On the missing this, we also need to be able to eliminate having the fields that we don't upload, like PHI, UDI. Again, this can make it harder to see actual important info. I hear you, Beth. If you can send me, we're, we're not making any changes in 2023 that um, are not. Um, we're not planning to make any changes to the platform in 2023 that are not critical, but we do have review groups going with each of our um, database task force with the surgeons to review the platform and um, suggest ways that we can improve upon it and, and providing feedback from data managers as well into that into those working groups. If you could send me what you think would be a good list of filters and what pages you would you could see those filters on being helpful. And that would be that would be of um, that would be good for me to bring to them. 
There's a lag sometimes with the missing variable report noting from the upload you just did to show up that you fix them. This can be frustrating when you are not aware that this can happen. I usually go back in the next day and then lo and behold, it has caught up. I'm being told, I, I had a report of this as well that we brought to IQVIA a couple weeks ago that the, it was, there was a lag time, but the lag time was only a few minutes. So I'm not sure if you're seeing something more than that. Um, please let me know or let IQ, let us know so we can reach out to IQVIA. Um, when we had them check into it, it was only just a few minutes that they were seeing that there was that lag time. If you are checking the missing variable list every three months when you are cleaning harvest and you're happy, why would you need to relook at the whole year? I would just relook at the whole year because I'm meticulous like that, but you don't have to. If you're happy with how you closed your last harvest, you did not make any changes to any of that data. You uh, didn't have any questions about your missingness for inclusion, and you've only uploaded new data within the last three months, then I wouldn't, then you don't have to go back. You can just look at that next, that last three months. So we have to check MVR and MV, mitral valve replacement and mitral valve repair for mortality thresholds instead of separately. Yeah, you have to check them together because the composite combines those together. So it's mitral valve repair or replacement and they're combined together. So when you look at the thresholds for missingness, look at those together. If we fail mortality status data thresholds for one proc, will we still get composite scores and data analysis for the other procs? Yes, as long as you meet the requirements for the other proc IDs. I thought we had been taught that only changes to cases are then uploaded when uploading whatever time frame. This was the first time I heard that IQVIA would delete a case. If you are, so IQVIA isn't, um, if I use the word delete, I used it incorrectly. They're removing the case from the warehouse. Um, they still have it in an audit trail so they can see if it was there or not ever. But, and you would also have it in your uploader. It would show you that those cases were removed from um, your um, site on the warehouse, from your, um, from your site's data to be included in analysis. You have to, um, there's, you have to upload a time frame. So whatever, whenever you did a case, you have to upload a time frame that includes that case. It would be so great if all these elements that have missing requirements were together. Yeah, I, I think so too. I'm gonna review that and um, I'm gonna put that on my list of things for the dashboard because I agree, I don't like the whole scrolling thing, not knowing and not even having some kind of marker on there that shows me. Um, I only know because I have the report open when I'm next to it, but um, it would be better if there was some type of indicator on, on the report. Um, It would be better if there was some type of indicator on the report. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Highlight the mortality fields within the non-analyzed dashboard to help us identify the three fields we need to review. I agree too. I agree with that, Kim. I'll um, let's see if that's something, um, some way to highlight it that's easy to do. This, the link of the threshold, so the, um, if you log into the IQVIA platform under resources, you'll see this first tab is the library. It's this national report analysis overview. This is the most recent one. The discharge mortality view does not give a total number of deaths. So this is something different than what we've been talking about today when we're looking at the thresholds for those three fields that we look at. Um, but I think we added something, uh, IQVIA added something in there. Let me just pick a time frame. We added something in there that combined the variables that we use to calculate total mortalities. I'll, I'm gonna continue on and I'll get back to your question once this page loads, Michelle. Which procedure types should we check these dashboards and metrics on again? So you're gonna refer to that national report overview on the IQVIA platform under the library. 
and on page starting on page 29 of 39. This is the STS composite quality rating. The first one is cabbage. That has its own criteria and then. And read these reports, they're very helpful in understanding what's going on. The next one is. Um, the AVR, AVR cabbage, mitral valve repair replacement, mitral valve repair replacement and cabbage. Um, and just like I said, the mitral valve repair replacements are combined. Um, on this page, you'll see the note here that clarifies mitral valve repair and replacements include all previously defined isolated mitral valve repairs and replacements and also allow for concomitant surgical AFib procedures, tricuspid valve repairs and surgical ASD repairs. Um, so it's on page, starting on page 29 of 39 is where you're going to want to refer to. When is IQVIA going to add antibiotic selection timing discontinuation to the dashboard? So I know what's reported out in the NQF measures. Um, I'm not sure about, are you saying it's not reported out in the participant dashboard? I'd have to check, I'm not sure. I have to check into that, Melissa. Is the missing variable report more accurate or participant dashboard report in terms of the missing threshold? I would refer to the uh, participant dashboard report um, just because you can break it down by PROC ID. I would clean up using the missing variable report, but for to confirm the data, I would use the participant dashboard. Yeah, I agree, Judy. It would be great if there was a report we could run that would let us know what elements are at risk of not meeting the threshold for each uh, discipline. So we do not have to go back and forth like you are doing now. I agree with that, and I'm not sure that we can get that in built into IQVIA. Um, and it would be very helpful if there was just a button that you all could check anytime you did your analysis. Um, it's kind of like the information is there. You have to dig for it when you're doing your abstraction, cleaning your data. I'm um, part of the job, but not as helpful as it could be. So I hear what you're saying. Is there a way to do, uh, is there a way to sort the star rating and NQF measures in the non analyzed dashboard rather than scrolling through all the metrics? I'm not sure I understand the question. Not sure I understand the question. I'm sorry. Need, needing to search by short name when the long is only displayed. This method by procedure in the year is insane. Should a separate canned report, please? Does the missingness report include the mortalities fields marked as an unknown? I believe it does. I believe that's something we had IQV update, um, but I would have to double check that. Could you send me a separate email um, so I can I can ask IQV? I think that we did have them update it that way, um, but I'm not 100% positive. In the participant dashboard, that's for the missing variable report. In the participant dashboard, you have separate lines for missing and unknown for those mortality fields. Hospital deaths not included in the operative mortality. It's a hospital deaths. Uh, it depends what you talk about when you're talking about operative mortality. We have uh, two ways to define that. One is on the data collection form, where operative mortality is is uh, not a child of died in hospital, or um, operative mortality is a child of discharged alive, not died in hospital. So hospital deaths is counted uh, in the parent field to operative mortality and you have to combine the parent field and the MTFD field. When we talk about the true definition of what operative mortality means in the CV surgery um, realm, we talk about deaths within 30 days of procedure um, for those patients discharged or any time um, during the initial acute care hospitalization. So it's two different definitions. Uh, that's why they are, that's why it's separated out that way. Um, we report hospital deaths separately than, than operative mortalities. And also we like to count hospital deaths differently um, for, at the hospital level when doing quality improvement projects. Uh, so a couple of things there. If you're looking for your total operative mortality counts, which is the definition of anybody that died within 30 days um, 
of the procedure if discharged or those patients that died um, within the hospital, you have to combine the two fields. And I'll show you. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It's your total, um, your total operative death for the definition of operative mortality is this line here. It's the MT OPD combined with died in hospital combined with died in OR. And this for this site, they're at 11.8% uh, for this uh, group. They had two patients die um, that counted as the definition of operative mortality. The QV platform places a lot of work on the abstractor for hospitals with higher volumes, creates a lot of work. Will this be a streamlined in the future? So if you have suggestions, um, send them to me. Abstraction is a lot of work and it's a lot of work to ensure clean data. Um, I'm not, that's that's not a um, that's a fair statement to say that anytime we do abstraction, it's it's a lot of work to make sure our data is clean and make sure we're doing a good job with it. But if there's ways that we can make it easier, I'm definitely open to hear those uh, those suggestions and pass them along. If it comes to a situation that you do have more than two percent, what do you recommend you do? Um, if you are at risk of not receiving a star uh, star rating. Uh, the first thing I would do is let your surgeons know before those reports even come out. Um, actually, the first, very first thing I would do, um, I would make sure my data is in way ahead of time. I would know that I'm at risk for not receiving a star rating. I would go to my surgeons and say, listen, I don't have mortality status on these patients and I need your help. Otherwise, we're not going to get a star rating. And I'd kind of um, place that on them so they they take ownership of it too, and it doesn't just fall on you. So then when you do not receive a star rating, if for whatever reason they're not able to help you or their office isn't able to get in contact with those patients, um, A, you have backup in that, and B, you already have their buy-in and they're, they're aware of the situation. So when you have to uh, report it out to your administration, you have them to stand behind you and say, yeah, I helped too, and we tried and we couldn't get it. Um, so I would definitely let your surgeons or let your, the surgeon staff know way ahead of time um, that you're at risk. Can we always count on knowing you are going to send us warnings if we are not going to be included? I'm only doing this for Harvest 1 and Harvest 3 because those are star ratings. Um, and this is a courtesy. This isn't something that um, is going to take work away from you to make sure you're cleaning your data. Um, so I will send out these reports uh, for Harvest 1 and Harvest 3, but still a responsibility of the abstractor to make sure that the data is clean. Where can we find this data analysis of the STS publication? It's on the IQVIA platform under the resource library. So on, on the IQVIA platform under resources library, it's this first link here. I think these emails should only go to data managers. They did only go to the data managers. Um, they went to the primary and backup contacts that we have for your site. Um, and that's who all of our emails will go to. It's a little confusing. I got an email with no missing data. I do have one AVR case that is unknown for mortality status, unable to reach patient. Um, Mary, feel free to for, feel free to email me uh, separately and I'll see if I have any more information or I'll send you the what we saw in the database on the 27th. Well, it may be if, if, Mary, if you answer an unknown, then it's not going to be missing because you've got an answer there. I don't know. I'm just th throwing that out there. Okay, I think I'm going to have to, um, we're going to have to end here. I'm going to see if there's any other questions that... Um, that I can answer that will be helpful in preparing you for the harvest close. Okay, I'm just looking to see um, if there's a specific question you have about a case, feel free uh, to reach out to me. I don't see any that are going to impact your harvest close um, that is going to be helpful to, to all the people still on the call. Um, but if there's something that I can help with, feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll do my best to get back to you. I have quite a few emails coming in, so 
anyway, thanks for everybody's time. I'm sorry we have to end and can't get through all the questions. Uh, thank you, Melinda, Leanne, and Addie for joining. And I hope everybody has a nice uh, rest of the day.